Hey guys, welcome back to Tealstone Homestead. It finally snowed here in northeastern Indiana. And today I have to move my German pastel quail into the garage. I had some people question me on my last video about where did the quail go since I made this whole like rabbit barn area. Don't worry guys, the quail are still here. They're just now in the middle room of our garage. The babies are well big enough <laughs> to be moved out of the house. They are way too big and honestly it's easier for me to remember to feed them when they are outside with the rest of the quail. So we're gonna get that set up. Hey everybody, how's everybody today? It snowed, but you guys wouldn't even know it, huh? So the quail room is beyond this door right here. <laughs> this room is kind of a jumble, honestly. <laughs> uh, it's not that bad though. The quail, I was so surprised, fit perfectly under this structure right here. I'm not even sure, guys, what this structure is. It was here before we moved here but I just know that I was going to take it apart last year and uh, it's basically holding up this door. So I can't do that, <laughs> but it's okay because the quail fit like perfectly under there. I was so surprised. I mean, literally that's how close of a fit it was. It honestly looks like I made it to fit right under there and I actually didn't. So I feel like that was just a really good stroke of luck. I'm currently putting my carrying cages right there. We have an outlet right there, so uh, just until I'm for sure that the babies aren't going to get too cold, I think I'm actually gonna move the carrying cages to right here and put the brooder right there. This is where we keep all of our feed. Um, five rabbit feed bags means that I need to contact my guy, actually because that's getting quite low. <laughs> we have our quail and our chicken feed right here. And then just some miscellaneous items, honestly. This is, this is the most miscellaneous room we have, honestly. I'm gonna move this litter box out for you guys to see this a little bit easier. Up here is the top level of my quail hutch, and these are all my current favorite quail. Um, we culled out everybody except for these guys because they're my favorites, and to be totally honest with you guys, I'm just culling for color right now. I was gonna cull for size, but I really wanna get um, that dilute color right there, that hen right there. I really wanna get more of those <laughs> because I think that she's just the prettiest hen, so I would love to start breeding the more dilute brownish color. And I was told that she is called a scarlet or red range tuxedo. She looks a little light to me. That's why I thought that she was a German pastel. And then we have several more up here that are tuxedos. I really like tuxedos. I think tuxedos are my favorite. Sorry that this water looks kind of gross, you guys. If you have quail, you understand. And it's not really a good placement because I did place it right next to the food. They're very messy. There's no way to keep it clean. I have these automatic waterers from rent coop and I love these things. They make, they make watering just easy. So I love them, but also they freeze really easily. Um, it's so funny too, because the quail water often freezes, but none of my rabbit water, since I moved all the rabbits in there, none of it freezes because I think there's just so many bodies in there. I actually did want to show you guys this as well. It's a little dark in here. I'm saving rabbit poop. <laughs> Every time I get an empty feed bag, I'm trying to save poop. And I don't know yet if this is gonna be for sale for like local people, or if I'm gonna use it on my own garden. I'm not really sure yet, but I'm really excited to have rabbit poop <laughs> again. While I'm out here and I am getting ready to you know, get the place ready to bring the brooder out here. I actually really need to clean out these trays. I've let them go on far too long. <laughs> so I really need to dump those trays out. I'm gonna save that manure too and it's going on my garden. Um, but they're very, very full. We're gonna go ahead and empty trays and then get some stuff organized around here for the brooder to sit back here.
guys, I actually totally forgot that there is an outlet right behind the hammock there. So I'm not gonna move all the carrying cages. I don't need to. I'm um, just gonna put the brooder right over there. We've gotta work really nicely. Let me let you guys see the German pastels before we move them though, because the lighting inside is a little bit better. You decided to join us in the quail room. Hey. I <laughs> know, I'm sorry. If you guys didn't see, I introduced Mirren in my last video. She is our new kitten. She's long-haired, well, medium to long-haired kitten. Little gray patch on the head. Gorgeous, gorgeous blue eyes that she doesn't want to show you. But she's very, very cute. We love Mirren. Okay, I'll put you down. She's probably gonna be very sad once I move the quail out of this room because she keeps coming in here every day and terrorizes them by getting on top of the brooder. I think she thinks it's funny. It is kind of funny, honestly. <laughs> so here is our indoor brooder setup. I don't think I ever told you guys, or oh, yeah, yeah, the way. I don't think I ever told you guys that I made this little pullout tray to go underneath it. I don't love this whole setup here, but it's what we got and it works fine. So I'm sure I'll make something better eventually, but this is our brooder. And as you can see, the babies are no longer babies anymore. I'm sorry that I forgot to show you guys what they looked like when they first hatched out, but most quail chicks look alike. But I love how light colored most of these chicks are. There's some of them that are like almost pure, like light brown, and I love that. I actually thought they were gonna be all white, but they are light brown. So I'm excited to have these German pastels in my breeding program, if you even want to call it a breeding program. Full disclosure guys, I'm just having fun with different colors right now. I'm not really considering myself a legit like quail, like purist breeder or anything like that. They're mainly just for meat at this point, but I am having fun mixing these different colors together and eventually I think it would, would be cool to have like my own color or something like that. I know most people that start in quail probably say that, so I probably sound really cliche, but I'm just having fun with them, honestly. I just think they're so much fun. Let's go ahead and get this brooder moved out to the garage and yeah, so they can stop being in here and stop stinking up the place. One of the main reasons that I'm not a huge fan of this brooder that I've made is because it opens from the top. <laughs> if you guys don't know, quail love to jump and basically like fly away if they can. I really do need to make something a little bit more thoughtful for the baby quail though, for sure. <laughs> about something that makes me really, really sad. In 2020, I went to a show in Danville, Indiana. I actually vlogged it. Um, and that was when I purchased Clove. And Clove was my second uh, Creme d'Argent dough that I ever bought. She's very important to me. Clove has been kind of the matriarch to create quality creams here. And I love her. She is such a good mama. And she has given me, in the last several months, two really great litters to work with. Um, and I actually kept two of her babies. I kept Drizzle and I kept Rhodey. They are brother and sister, but I did want to keep both of them because I really liked that litter. I thought that was a really nice litter. We currently have several more growing out from her last litter. And she is actually supposed to be due in the next six days. 
Um, but something has happened to Clove. I'm not 100% sure, and I hate giving you guys any bad news on the rabbits because it just makes me so sad, but um, Clove is not doing well, to say the least. And unfortunately, it puts me in a tough spot because I love her. Being a responsible livestock owner, I am now considering the fact of I need to call Clove myself. Um, and it gets really, really tough when we start talking about that kind of thing because I'm close to her. She was kind of my birthday present. <laughs> And so I, I'm close to her. I've worked with her a lot. She's been such a good mama. She's been featured so many times in my videos and you guys may not have even known it. She's just very special to me. And so uh, I, I don't think that she is pregnant, really. Uh, I don't think that she took, but she has gone downhill quite quickly. I took her out the other day and she does not feel good. Um, she's way out of condition. She's basically skin and bones at this point. She is extremely emaciated. Um, she gets free fed, free fed pellets, free fed hay, free fed supplements, um, treats, everything. Um, so there's no reason why she should be wasting away like that, but she's just in a very, very rough condition right now. And um, uh, at this point, I believe it's probably a, some sort of bone infection. Uh, there's several things going on with her. And in a situation where I have tried my best to combat these issues that she's had, and she's still not thriving, um, it's unfortunately my duty to call her and be responsible and not let her suffer. I'm gonna wait six days and see if she has babies. If she doesn't, which is likely, then I'm gonna have to call her out and I'm gonna have to work with the babies that she has given me. Even if she does have babies, we are still going to call her. We would probably immediately foster the babies if she had any. I don't think she's going to though. Um, but that is the plan for Miss Clove and it really, really sucks. It really, really does, so. I'm going to continue on with Drizzle and Rhodey and Dolce, and Cassia and Churro and whatever else babies out there that looks good to me. Um, there's several in here as well, so there's just, there's a lot of babies that I have options with, but. Um, so anyway, that's what's going on with Miss Clove. It sucks sometimes, it really does, it's not easy. But anyway, we have to put some nest boxes together because I do have does due on Friday. So that is fun. Um, and hopefully I'll have this video up before Friday. <laughs> if you guys ever wanna see like some baby updates that are more like real time, you can follow me on my Instagram. Uh, and I usually post updates on my stories mainly. I do post like actual photos on Instagram sometimes too, but mostly my updates are on the stories and on Facebook sometimes, so. We do have to put some nest boxes together. We have Twix Dew, we have Tundra Dew, we have Cassia that we're not really sure if she's due or not, honestly. I don't think that she was. I think she had a false pregnancy, so I actually think she's due a little bit later now because I did rebreed her. Tangent, sorry guys. Tundra's already got her nest box. She wanted to nest early, so I gave it to her like a couple of days ago. So she's already got her nest box, she's already nested in it, and I'm very excited for that litter. So we're gonna go ahead and put a nest box together for Twix and Cassia, and hopefully we'll have some babies by the end of the week. So let's do it. Also guys, I did wanna point out that I do have merch, and this sweatshirt is proving to be a favorite of many people. I also have a Katornix Quail Lover sweatshirt. Kristen at Whiskey Tango Farms actually got one, and it looks amazing. So if you guys want a sweatshirt, the link is in my description down below, my shop link, and you can buy them there. And anyway, let's get to the nest boxes. Somebody asked me the other day, if I was still putting cardboard in my nest boxes because the rabbits are in here now. I am still gonna do that in the winter, I think. Put a piece of cardboard in there. It does help keep them insulated, and the bottom of my nest, bo nest boxes are um, made of wire mesh, 
And that really does help in the summer months when it's like super hot. So, but in the winter it is cold, so I do put cardboard in them. I just think it's helpful to keep the kits a little bit warmer. I'm gonna do pine shavings. Stuff, big handful of hay in there. For the most part, I let them do it however they want to when I put it in there. Alright guys, now I have does like scraping their nest boxes behind me. That is nice and fun. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something new. Thanks for coming along with me and getting some chores done. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. <laughs>